Hello everyone, my name is Det Ho Tung Min. I am researcher from Indra A. I'm going to talk about B-band satomorphy for the characterization of thoracic areas. First of all, I spent a few words about a few emission biomass. The European Space Agency biomass mission, we collect B-band SAR data globally for the first time. It will employ a multiple baseline orbit during the initial phase of its lifetime to do tomography. Delivering a curate global mass of forest biomass is the main objective of the mission. We did plan for 2023 low today. Let's talk about the events of tomography. BBN blood frequency signals are needed to penetrate a thick vegetation layer because its wavelength is about uh, 69 cm. However, this measurement alone does not guarantee a good performance in forest applications. This is because they cannot remove the crowd contributions. Unlike a traditional SAR, tomography has been demonstrated to improve SAR's capability in many applications, particularly in forest areas. This is because multiple SAR acquisitions with a slightly different look angle over the same area can allow us to quantify the three dimensions of the forest reflectivity. How does it work? First, we need to use um, the data in the, in the development of the biomet mission. There are two campaigns in the tropical forest uh, to support algorithms development. In airborne data has been collected over the Tropisa campaign in South America and Africa campaign in Africa. Second, in um, in fake calibration step, which allows us to extract um, the DEM and the face screen, and so better image quality. There are two different approaches to do this step. So basically, one is a SKP technique, and another is a face center double localization technique. Third, after do uh, fake calibration. In the tomography processing step, which allows us basically to convert multiple um, baseline into multiple layers of data stack, the implementation is equal easy. It can be carried out by exploiting the relationship uh, a Fourier transform, with uh, with is link um, between reflectivity and multiple baseline signal. After the tomography processing, we refer to it image within a multi-layer data stack simply by associated with a high, for example, 10 meter layer, 20 meter layer, and so on. So um, the crawl layer for the image will be focused as your meter regardless of the art of tomography. So in the next, I will show you our highlights and results. We focus on the DLA EPSA tomography data set which has the vertical resolution about 10 meters. By doing tomography, um, we can form many layers to better quantify forest variables. For these investigations, we select five forest type class based on the diversity. The level of diversity can be associated with the different spatial pattern of the canopy, enhanced biomass. For classification tasks, we consider a random forest approach to study the performance. For tomographic layers, with its polarization, we exploit nine layers at 5 meter intervals, for example, from 0 meter to 40 meter. So we have 27 feet in boost for random forest classification. Let's look at the performance. The behavior of um, cobone and crossbone backscattering coefficient is compared between the original image and the tomographic layer at 35 meter. They vary strongly in class 1, which uh, will be easy to classify. On the other hand, why tomographic layer um, backscatter will um, still allow us to separate from all the class the original one is visibly messed up by exploiting the vertical structure information from tomography the performance accuracy could be increased from 60% to 33% 
did he as expected because the ability of tomography to deal with the vertical forest structure extraction result in again in performance in all class this figure reveals that um, the volume layers for sample from 20 meter to 40 meter plays an important role in the classification process interestingly it also shows that the layers for sample from 5 to 10 meter contribute useful signature to the performance such a contribution from layers can be explained by the signal extinction where the signal is decrease in the presence of high biomass and thus high density. Why do we need to consider two uh, different continentals? From the recent study to tomography analysis from uh, campaign 2009 in South Africa, uh, from Guyana, um, that uh, has been shown that there is a strong correlation between the forest biomass and tomography. However, since um, biomass mission is a global a global mission, it needs to um, to understand the five days in another continental. This is why we have a campaign every site in Africa. The rest of the talk is to um, study the satomorphy for the retrieval of the forest biomass. First of all, um, a convenient way to observe the forest vertical structure is to use a forest profile which is basically a slide of the multiple layer data. We observe that the vertical distribution had a shape of an um, angular spreading that arises from, from the location where most of the um, scatter is concentrated. We call this the position is a uh, face center. For example, we show a uh, vertical basket uh, distribution with respect to the face center at 10 meter, 20 meter, and 30 meter. So um, uh, you can see it in this uh, schematic view very clearly. On the left, in the top, uh, traditional sun has uh, no information in vertical, and this is why they can be affected by the crowd level where is sensitivity to slope and some moisture and so we can see the clear biomass saturation uh, problem in contrast thanks to tomography we uh, are able to slide the forest layer by layer we slide the forest so we can fully understand what really it does and in this way has a lot in removing the crack levels and therefore improving the linking to biomass we found that the um, for the layer between 20 meter and 40 meter, the correlation becomes very highly significantly. We found one layer 30 meter, that is the most sensitivity layer where the productivity and biomass um, grows in together. Let's talk about how to retrieve biomass. To increase the sensitivity in the low biomass region, we uh, consider um, the face center a high which has a stable relationship uh, between uh, two different continental. So uh, for biomass retrieval, we propose to you a model which includes not only the, um, the layer 30 meter productivity but also the face center high information. We establish a simple model as uh, this equation. So on the left with the uh, old data set, the related error is about 12% indicating a very good performance for the forest biomass uh, estimation from tomography data for the full range of the biomass so basically from a 0 until 500 tons per hectare in other slides uh, basically that uh, we cross using the same methodology into in, in two sides and we are getting more or less uh, the same results cap say it is transferable now let's move to um, discussion. When it comes to um, satellite, the, redu the reduction of um, the system uh, bandwidth to uh, 6 megahertz leads to a significant vertical resolution loss uh, with respect to the original airborne data. Uh, however, it is possible to retrieve the forest high to within an accuracy of uh, better than uh, Four meter, whereas the layer 30 meter reflectivity have a correlation with higher 0 0.8 with uh, with respect to the crowd data, as you can see in the figure, the biomass tomography um, errors is about 10 percent, uh, 
uh, with um, respect to five percent comparison with the airborne case. So um, I'm ready for summary. First, we uh, demonstrate that uh, the high sensitivity of satomorphy to forest vertical structure enables us to uh, improve classification performance by up to 30 percent and uh, tomography allow us to uh, better measure the full range of the biomass values so uh, we found that um, the crowd are from 5 to 10 meters and the volume layers from 20 to 40 meters play an important role in uh, identifying the forest type such a contribution from the crowd layers can be explained by signal extinction where signal is decreased in the present of high biomass and thus for the high density the, co um, the complemented uh, information from uh, crowd and volume layers is true for all polarizations second um, tomography data is um, a highly uh, significantly correlated with um, biomass in the upper um, vegetation layer for example from 20 to 40 meter where the um, influence of large trees um, are predominant in fact both, um, econ uh, both uh, ecological modeling and uh, American leader um, measurements has been shown that um, the 30 meter layer is a key approach to uh, to better estimate biomass in a tropical forest since uh, the fraction of biomass includes in in is is strongly correlated with the total biomass. So um, our uh, our results uh, considerably reinforce the scientific basis uh, for the biomass mission, um, increasing our confidence that it can be uh, it can provide accurate mapping for the global forest biomass, uh, not only the boreal um, um, but also the tropical forest, and they be um, enable a uh, progress on an understanding of the global carbon flux, for example, the red initiative and related topics, uh, and so on. Thank you for your attention.